Mega Trick Trivia Time. Grab your friends and play it online. With Ali and Gina and Taco just for you. It's Mega Trick Trivia Time. And we'll feel it all right. Okay! Come on! Let's play! Hello, good evening. Welcome, everybody. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining us. Sorry for the late start here. My name is Ollie with Mega Tricks Entertainment. We're going to play some general knowledge trivia here in just a few minutes. If this is your first time joining us, make sure that you also join the online game. Uh, YouTube here is where you'll hear and see me ask the questions, but in order to answer, you need to join our online game platform. It is easy, it's not an app, there's nothing to download. Just open up your phone. I recommend playing from your phone. Open it up, uh, go to online.begatricks.com and enter in the code TRICKS3, T-R-I-C-K-S, three. Once you do that, it will ask you for just a little bit of information. It'll look a little bit like this. It's gonna to wanna to know your name and the state you're playing from. If you are here in Illinois, get out of here, Autofill. Um, once you give those two pieces of information, click go and you'll be set to play. Um, if you're not playing from the United States, feel free to let us know what country you're playing from. We really appreciate that. We just like to know where we have participants from. I know we have a bunch of amazing friends in Canada who are here pretty much every day. So thank you for continuing to join us. And thank you to those of you that may be playing for the first time tonight. So once you've done this, once you see this screen and it says the game will begin shortly, there's nothing else you need to do right now. You're set to go. Before we start the game, I'm going to give people a few minutes to join. 69 people hanging out right now, and that number is still climbing up, so we'll give it a few minutes. Uh, I'll go over a few things about how the system works here right before we start. But before that, just a few things about what we have going on here at Bank of Tricks. So obviously, we're going to play some general knowledge trivia tonight, not just any general knowledge. These questions tonight are all from categories chosen by our donation drawing winner from this week, uh, who was Mike S. Mike S., thank you so much for your donation last week. Uh, if you're new to this, we do accept donations or tips online. You can see the links here on Venmo, PayPal, or Zelle. Uh, this currently, this may change soon, but currently this is still the only form of income that Bag of Tricks has. Uh, so we really do appreciate you guys when you donate um, or you send those tips. And our way of giving back right now is each week we choose one person and that individual gets to select one of the trivia nights we do the following week. You can ask us to do a theme trivia night, or like Mike did tonight, we can do a general knowledge trivia night, mix it up, but all the questions will come from a certain number of categories that you've selected. So for tonight, uh, I don't wanna misquote, so let me look at these categories. Everything that you see tonight will be from the categories as follows. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, WWE or WWF Professional Wrestling, 90s Nickelodeon and cartoons, Chicago sports, comic books, Seinfeld slash other sitcoms, and zombies. So those categories gave us all the questions, but I do want to be clear. Mike, the winner of the raffle, has no idea what the questions are. He is at the same level as you guys in terms of playing. So if he wins, congratulations. There's no foul play here. I wrote these questions today. Gina hasn't even seen them. Nope. So... For me. <laughs> With that said, uh, we will do this again for next week. So if you've donated to Bag of Tricks in the last seven days, I'm going to include everyone that donated for EJI, uh, for the Equal Justice Initiative, even though those donations just went directly to them. Uh, since you went through us, it's in our system, and you're going to be eligible to win the donation drawing raffle for next week. Um, if you haven't donated and you would like to, those links will be here all night. Uh, and we will close that raffle tonight after our Gilmore Girls trivia. So you still have time. If you do donate, you'll be eligible to be the winner for next week and choose some trivia for us. So thank you to everybody that's already donated. Um, and I haven't been saying this as much lately, but thank you to those of you that have supported Bag of Tricks in the many, many other ways, uh, liking the page on Facebook or commenting or sharing uh, the posts that we have, inviting your friends and your families to play these online events. That's the cool thing about online trivia is we're not bound by where you're at physically. As long as you can get on a computer and you're free at the time that we're on, you can play. Um, with that said, 
we do have in the works our first returns to in-person trivia. Um, so there'll be some announcements coming out on uh, the Bega Tricks Facebook page and on our website soon. I can tell you, if you could have guessed, uh, I imagine many of you would have guessed that the first brewery that reached out um, that has a date set uh, that we will be returning to is our sponsor tonight, Elmhurst Brewing Company. So not only have they been sponsoring these events online, whoever wins tonight wins a $25 gift card to Elmhurst Brewing Company. Delicious beer, delicious food, open for carry out and delivery in Elmhurst, as well as now their beer garden is open. Um, they're being very responsible. That's one of my um, no ifs, ands, or buts about going back to hosting trivia is we're only gonna do it at venues that are showing us that they can handle this responsibly and, and follow the guidelines that have been set forth and Elmhurst Brewing Company is showing that they are above and beyond those guidelines. So they have reached out and we will be hosting trivia there in June. Um, that specific date is still to be determined, Yay. but it will be happening on the patio weather permitting. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much to Elmhurst Brewing Company for sponsoring all of these events and for reaching out. Uh, I don't want to leave out to Pollyanna, one of our first ever clients, another incredible brewery with three locations, has also reached out and is definitely interested in getting us out and hosting trivia on their three patios in St. Charles, Roselle, and in Lamont, not far from me and Gina right here. Um, so plenty to come guys, but until everything is back to as normal as I deem possible, uh, we'll continue to do these online events for you. Especially, um, I, I don't wanna leave out our friends that can't come to these breweries. Like I mentioned earlier, our friends in Canada, we will continue to do online events for the foreseeable future guys. Um, so we're not going anywhere. We're just gonna be offering more for you. So thank you for all your support. You're certainly helping us get through this time uh, and please know that we really, really appreciate it. With that said, we do have another event tonight at nine o'clock right after this. We'll be doing Gilmore Girls Trivia. So join us for that. Again, even if you're not a fan of the show, hang out and chat in the comments. If you have nothing else going on, Gino will be on there. Um, I'll be here in front of the camera. I like to check out those comments. So we love when you guys join us and just uh, shoot the breeze, if you will. Uh, there is no event tomorrow. I mentioned this yesterday. We did have a fundraiser planned, but the organization that uh, was doing that, putting on that event, has decided to reschedule amidst everything going on. Um, and I completely respect the decision. We will be rescheduling with them for a future date. If you're a part of the online community, um, we're not going to host another public event, um, but I, I may host something for the online community. So if you haven't joined, please do, um, because that's where I'll post updates about anything we possibly do tomorrow. Um, with that said, everybody, we're going to dive into this game. Anything I missed, uh, Gina? Thank you, Megan, for the donation. We appreciate it. All right. Let me jump down here or up here, if you will. So if this is your first time playing, one last reminder, you do need to join the online platform, online.bagoftricks.com. That's where you'll submit your answers. You will not submit your answers through the YouTube chat. However, you can continue to talk and have a good time in that chat. I see a lot of you guys are already doing that. The person with the highest point total at the end of the night will win that $25 gift card to Elmhurst Brewing Company. In order to win, you have to have the most points, and in order to earn points, you have to answer questions correctly. We have a mixture of multiple choice questions and fill in the blank or, or submit your own answer questions, if you will. We're gonna start out with multiple choice questions. Those tend to be the easiest of the night, but you never know. Some of these might be a little bit tougher than you think. Each multiple choice question is worth a maximum of 150 points if you get it correct and you earn less points the longer it takes you to answer. So you do want to get that answer in as quickly as possible. There's a 30 second timer. Once I start the timer, you'll see four answers appear, A, B, C, and D. One of them is always correct. So all you have to do is determine which one is correct and click on it. However, if you click the wrong answer, you can't undo it. You can't take it back and change your answer. So make sure you look and make sure you're clicking the right thing before you touch any of the answers. Uh, however, like I said, you're gonna earn more points if you answer quickly than if you take a long time. So there's a little bit of balance here to how you're gonna earn these points. Uh, I'm not gonna explain it anymore because we, we do have a practice question. This first question looks and feels just like all of the other multiple choice questions. The only difference is that it's not worth any points. So uh, no pressure here, all you have to do is do this question to learn how the system works. So um, with that said, thank you everybody for being here. Cheers to y'all, uh, excited to do this one with you. And cheers to Mike, thank you for the donation last week and uh, congratulations on being the winner, getting to choose these categories. All right, here we go. First question of the night, as always, 
is a practice question, and it is the same as always. What is the name? I don't know why I did this GIF. I think I changed it. What is the name of your host tonight? What is my name? So all you have to do is select my name out of the following four answers. Is my name Bumble Sniff Candy Crush, Bourgeoisie Cul-de-sac, Burberry Snickers Bar, or Ali? What is the name of your host tonight? So you have 30 seconds to answer this one, not worth any points. Bourgeoisie cul-de-sac. Bourgeoisie cul-de-sac. Anyone who has chowder pants as a last name is correcting me yet? Chowder pants. Uh, yeah, Amy, I think originally I had my fake names were the kids from uh, Home Improvement, Mark, Brad, and, and uh, was it Randy? Um, and then I changed it with the Benedict Cumberbatch generator, and I forgot to change the GIF. All right. Mine was Congleton Candlestick. What is it? Congleton Candlestick. Congleton Candlestick. I'm excited to see it when we look at the rankings for the first time. <laughs> all right, here we go. So <laughs> all the fake ones got guesses here, but the correct answer was, my name is Ali. Great job. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting Begatrix. Let's dive into these real questions. Each one of these worth a maximum of 150 points. But again, make sure you answer as quickly as possible to earn as many points as you can. Here we go. Question number two. What was the name of Danny Tanner's daily talk show on the TV show Full House? What was the name of Danny Tanner's talk show that he hosted on Full House? Was it Good Morning San Diego, Danny in the Morning, Wake Up San Francisco, or Tool Time? Sitcoms. Sitcoms. Oscar bait moldy spore. <laughs> moldy Oscar bait moldy spore. spore. I feel like... Abigail Griffin, if she's here, would like that one. That, Moldy yeah, Spore. Moldy Spore. That's right up her alley. All right, everybody's in. I don't know what I clicked on here. You guys knew this one. That's a social. Cheers, everybody. Wake up, San Francisco. You guys knew it. 54 if you got it right. <laughs> All right, question three. Budnick, Telly, and Dina were characters on what 90s TV show? Budnick, Telly, and Dina were the names of characters on what 90s TV show? Was it Hey Dude, Salute Your Shorts, Pete and Pete, or All That? Jen is back. Jen's husband answered the first question wrong. Oh, no. Uh, Jen's husband. Not a good Jen, showing. It's okay. It's okay, Jim. We're happy to have you. Yeah. Welcome well, back, Jen. <laughs> Chris B. Like the Tim Taylor gift better than the Zac Efron gift. You must like fatty hair. Uh, don't we all? Jen's husband. Poor Jim. Jen's husband. All right. Everybody's in. This started off, uh, nobody had missed it, and then people started going with Hey Dude, Pete and Pete, all that. All of those were 90s Nickelodeon shows, but the correct answer here was Salute Your Shorts at Camp Anawana. Uh, we also had Donkey Lips. What a name. Donkey Lips. All right, good job. Question four. Which of the following individuals is the chairman and CEO of the World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE? Who is chairman and CEO of the WWE? Is it Vince McMahon, Ted Turner, Shawn Michaels, or Rupert Murdoch? Remember when The Miz was just a uh, contestant on uh, Road Rules on yeah, MTV? I watched that. Mike, yeah. He's in line. Now he's a huge wrestler. I liked Real World more, but I like Road Rules. I like the Real World Road Rules challenge. Yeah, and now it's just the challenge. And now it has is like it 20 seasons. I don't know. I never watched the challenge. All right, everybody's in. Everybody do your best Vince McMahon strut. Vince McMahon, the correct answer, and almost a perfect uh, answer. So cheers, everybody. That's a social. All right. Question five. We'll look at the standings for the first time after this question is done. Premiering in the late 90s, how many seasons in total were there 
of the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, premiering in the late 90s. How many seasons were there in total of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Was it seven, five, nine, or three? Oh, Lindsay, that's okay. We're just happy you're here. No. That's okay. All right. Everybody is in. A lot of you said seven. Eleven of you said nine. Five people said five. That's nice. Uh, nobody said three. You guys at least know there was more than three. And in fact, there were seven seasons. Uh, great job. Seven seasons of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's question five. So for the first time, we will take a look at the standings. If you're in first, second, or third place, your score will stay atop the board. Everybody else is going to rotate through, so make sure you're watching. See where you're at. And let's see how many Benedict Cumberbatch names were generated tonight. Here we go. Current standings. Team Cream! Fantastic in first place, Mr. Beans and Illinois in third. Budapest Bumbersplat, Gremlins three out of the bag. I love it. Sierra Humble Hotel. Check, scratch and sniff. Shield, Sierra Hotel India El Echo. Billy Ray Captain Cheesecake, Jennifer Wyden, welcome back. Cheesy bread. Oh, take your top off. Geezer, the old bag and the curmudgeon, welcome. Sorry, answer a lot. Beezlebub Carrot Patch. <laughs> I like that one. Bandicoot Cumbersome. Biblical Concubine. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Mac oh, Attack, God. Mostly Dead. Kevin's Chili. Oh. We'll go through one more time. Uh, fourth place, Master right. Bakers. <laughs> Osterbait Moldy Spore. Blubberbutt Cracker Dong. <laughs> <laughs> Fits in the Baby Tantrums. Welcome back. Uh, give that tiny oh, little brew dog a little hug and kiss for me. Yeah, almost baby time, huh? Who else? Alan Buford the third. Welcome back. Two Boons, A&M Glover. Hey, what's up? I like the name. Biblical Concubine. That was. <laughs> Bob Loblaws Loblog. Welcome back. Uh, Nick and Amy. Not cool. Miss LaRocca and Bert. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. All right, here we go. Next round is still multiple choice questions. It still works exactly the same. I know it's on Taco, but I'm going to leave it for a minute. Um, question number six, multiple choice. Oh, and a Gina can. Sorry, guys. Question number six. Which of the following sports ball players was not drafted number one overall by a Chicago team? So these are players from uh, a variety of sports, um, but they were all in Chicago at some point or another. Which player listed below was not drafted number one overall in their respective draft? by a Chicago team? Was it Harold Baines, Derrick Rose, Patrick Kane, or Michael Jordan? Addison would like everyone to know she's wearing a face mask and relaxing. Maggie, I'm assuming you're talking about like a spa face mask, not like face mask that we're all wearing oh right now. Jen's husband equals Lot's wife, Rich! <laughs> pillar of salt over here. Oh, Activated charcoal dog. and cucumber. <laughs> Ooh, nice. All right. Uh, a couple people said Harold Baines. Everybody uh, stayed away from Derek Rose. Patrick Kane, you guys knew. But Michael Jordan, uh, this one tends to fool people. Not you guys, though. You knew. Michael Jordan not drafted number one overall by a Chicago team. All right, question seven. What was Kel's favorite drink on the Nickelodeon show Keenan and Kel? What was Kel's favorite drink on Keenan and Kel? Was it lemonade, Coca-Cola, orange soda, or water? Jealous over a life, Maggie. <laughs> Good. Kids should have Yeah, there. relax. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Ooh. Oh, nice. You're using your new spill-proof spill -proof glass. Yeah. If any of you know me, you know that I spill it. Thanks, Christy Ann. I like these um, donation 
uh, drawing nights when you guys choose the categories for general knowledge. Um, honestly, I might just change. Nobody's done a theme night in a long time. I might just change it to this because this is fun for me. This this makes me think and makes me write random questions and it keeps me on my toes. All right, what was Kel's favorite drink on Keenan and Kel? If you've ever seen this show, you can't forget it. Who loves orange soda? Kel does. 63 people 91 percent of you got that right that's absolutely a social i don't have any orange soda to cheers with but i will with my whiskey sour cheers everybody all right question number eight filbert filbert character from the nickelodeon series rocco's modern life is which kind of animal filbert was which of these animals was he a cow a frog a dog or a turtle filbert was which of these animals Got that last question thanks to the last dance. Amy, that's why I included that specific one. Because of the last dance. My students are done next Wednesday. I'm not far behind starting mine next Friday. Nice. All right, let's see how you answered. So 26 of you said cow. 38 of you said turtle. Um, there was a character who was a cow, the aptly named Heifer. Heifer the Heifer. A male cow. Yeah, a male cow. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense, does it, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, the correct answer, though, is turtle. Filbert was turtle. The turtle. Uh, so good job. 38 of you got that. Question oh, nine. Man. Which of the following four films is not... A zombie film so which of the following four films does not revolve around zombies or a type of zombie film 28 days later train to Busan district 9 or dawn of the dead Aaron it hurts your heart that you misclicked oh I'm sorry but good to see you didn't know you were here welcome Aaron I have a question I don't think I've ever asked. How many people out there are in education? Because I see you guys talking about school. How many people are teachers or administrators? Or I know there's a principal. Um, how many people out there are in education? Let's see. Now, Amy, Chris, Jen, Jeff. Yeah, I think it's quite a few. Who else? Lindsay, I'll watch for that. If it, if it restarted you, I'll check. You guys knew this one. Train to Busan, uh, a foreign film, but a fantastic one if you haven't seen it. It's on Netflix, um, but it is about zombies. The correct answer here is District 9. District 9 about aliens uh, coming to Earth and being segregated off into their own District 9. Um, so good job, 52 of you got that right. Mm -hmm. We have two more multiple choice questions. The Blackhawks. The Chicago Blackhawks have won Stanley Cups in 2010, 2013, and 2015, in addition to other Cups they've won, but recently, 2010, 13, and 15, beating three different opponents in each. Which of the following four teams was not a team that they defeated to win the Stanley Cup? So three of these they beat to win the Stanley Cup, one they did not. Which one did they did not? Which one did they not beat for a Stanley Cup? The Boston Bruins, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Philadelphia Flyers, or the Detroit Red Wings? Lots of educators. Lots of educators. Music teacher, Kayla, Lindsay Davis, Jim Widener, Jen Widener. Oswego High School. Tyler, I used to work at Oswego High School. Katie Gray, work at a university. Pete is a sixth grade math teacher by day, trivia host by night. Sarah, don't I know? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to getting Pete back at uh, Will County Brewing Company. I'm going to reach out to them tomorrow. Uh, does being a terrible homeschool teacher for the last few months count? Um, hey, Bobby. It's okay. There's not a, uh, many more sports. Keep it up. You got this. Correct answer here. Ooh, most of you got it. The Detroit Red Wings. They did defeat the Bruins, the Lightning, and the Flyers. They did not play the Red Wings for a Stanley Cup final. All right, only one more multiple choice question. And here it is, question number 11. 
Oh, I lied. There's one more sports question. Oh, oh, oh you trickster. Sorry. Uh, Chicago Bulls, if you watch The Last Dance, you should know this one. Uh, this one, you don't have to choose the odd man out. You have to choose the correct answer. The Chicago Bulls defeated which of the following teams for their sixth and final NBA title of the 1990s? Which team did the Bulls defeat in their final uh, win of the championships? Was it Portland Trail Blazers, Utah Jazz, Seattle Supersonics, or the Phoenix Suns? Thank you, Laura, for the donation. Thank you, Alyssa, for the donation. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Becky, you haven't watched The Last Dance yet. It's a good time now. Now they're, all 10 episodes are out. Chris, you didn't watch The Last Dance? Oh, I guess you're from Wisconsin, right? Am I wrong about that? Was Chris from Wisconsin? I don't remember anything. Correct answer. Most of you knew this. Utah Jazz. 52, 74% of you, the Utah Jazz correct answer all right that's the final multiple choice question so here we go we'll look at the standings uh mr beans now in first team cream in second m dubs 85 up into third everybody else rotating through yeah mcfly i looked into that it's classified by every site that i could find as a zombie movie Bobby. What did Bobby say? She met the Jazz in Vegas. They invited her to brunch. Ooh, did you go, though, Bobby? Yeah, did you go? I would go. Nicole, it's a zombie movie in our hearts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's splitting hairs at that point. District 9 is the correct answer because District 9 was unarguably about aliens. No mention of anything near zombies. Um... So that's where we'd be. All right. We're almost through. Hey, Albin. Welcome. Drew C., Alley Cat, Hogan and Friends all over the place. Lazy Housewives. Yeah, there are two Lindsays, Lindsay. All right. Here we go. This is what's about to happen. The game's gonna change a little bit. We no longer have multiple choice questions. Now you have to type your answer in. For the next 10 questions, we have two mini bonus rounds. The first one has five questions that are all related to each other. Uh, I'm going to ask you the question. Each one will have a different prompt and you'll have to answer it by typing in the answer um, rather than selecting from a multiple choice selection. So there will no longer be multiple choice options for the rest of the game. When I start your 30 second timer, you'll see a text box pop up. You have to type in your answer, whether that's on your phone or your computer, it works the same. When you type in your answer, make sure you hit submit when you're done and make sure you hit submit before the timer runs out. My recommendation, try to hit submit before the timer even gets to five. Since this is the internet, it could mess up. Uh, so give yourself the best chance by getting that in before the timer hits five, but you don't have to rush too much because there is no longer points deducted depending on how long you take to answer. So take your time, spell your answers right, just try to submit it before the timer hits five. The next five questions are about comic books. Comic books, I didn't dive too deep into this. I'm, I'm trying to keep it uh, relatable to as many people as possible, even though we are talking comic books. For this round, what I'm going to do is tell you the name, the alias, that a superhero or a comic book character could be a hero or a villain. I'm gonna give you the name that they use as an alias. For example, if I said, name the comic book character that uses the alias Bruce Wayne, your answer would be Batman, all right? There's nothing in here meant to trick you. Um, these are just comic books. Some of them DC, some of them Marvel, um, some of them easy, some of them tough, but they're each worth 200 points if you get it right. So take your time, try to spell your answers right. Uh, but but that's it. Just that's it. <laughs> Here we go. Question number twelve. First one. Name the comic book character that uses this alias. Peter Parker. Which comic book character uses the alias Peter Parker? 
You have 30 seconds once the timer starts, which should be right now. Let's talk brunch, sweet or savory items. Start with savory, end with a little sweet. I don't usually do I sweet usually at all. Savory. Yeah, I usually do savory. I'm, I'm I really want buttermilk right now. Ooh, ooh buttermilk. Anyone like buttermilk? Buttermilk Geneva, in Naperville Geneva. or Geneva? Oh. I'm very much a scramble person. I like scramble with a whole bunch of flavors and potatoes and meat and random stuff. It doesn't even have to have meat. I like veggie I like scrambles. Skillets. Yeah, skillets and scrambles. Yum, buttermilk is delicious. Yes, yes, yes. Becky, comic book guy hair, hair is luscious. Could you do me a favor? Yeah, what do you mean? Could you make me a drink? What do you, what do you? Um, give me one sec. Wow, everybody that answered, except for one person got this. Wow. The correct answer is Spider-Man. Spider-Man, if you wrote Spider-Man, you got points here. That's how this round's going to work. Here we go. Question number 13. Name the comic book character who uses this alias, Selena. Kyle, which comic book character goes by the alias Selena Kyle? You have 30 seconds. All right. Good skillet with a side of pancakes for savory sweet. Lindsay, yep, that's, that, that, that's my brunch yep. menu right there. Stray Hen in Elmhurst. Have you been to Stray Hen? No, but I've been meaning to for like a year. Oh, we'll have to check it out. Right. If a menu has a breakfast burrito on it, that's a winner. Yeah, I like a good breakfast burrito. I like making a good breakfast there. burrito at home. Who's the Stray Hen? Um, Becky. I've heard it's amazing and they have um, dark matter coffee. Ooh, I like dark okay, coffee from <laughs> uh, The correct answer here, many of you knew this, was Catwoman. Catwoman. Yeah, but you got to cut it in half. It won't fit. <laughs> Catwoman. All right, number 14. Name the comic book character that uses this alias, Arthur Curry. Arthur Curry. Which comic book character has the alias of Arthur Curry? Butterfields, yeah, Kayla. There's a couple Butterfields. One that's actually on Butterfield, and then one that's not. We have a pretty good breakfast this year, too. We do. What's it called? I don't remember. I don't remember. Honeyfield. Honeyfield, yeah. I go for the food, not the name. Good coffee is key for me. You want good coffee, I can't go. Juicio has donuts on the table for free instead of bread. Yeah, yeah Steph, that's dangerous. We've been there with Steph, right? What about we go? Uh, old country? Old Country Old Buffet. North, Avenue with the caramel roasted coffee. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. The breakfast chimichanga from Handlebar is where it's at. That's a combination of words I didn't know I needed to hear. That sounds amazing. Breakfast chimichanga. All right, I'm checking your answers. I am multitasking here. Uh, correct answer is Aquaman. Jason Momoa. Uh, Aquaman. Jason Momoa looking much more manly than Aquaman ever looked in a comic. Uh, number 15. Name the comic book character that used the alias or had the real name of Scott Summers. What was the name of the comic book character whose real name was Scott Summers? Everyone has you when it comes to bacon, Brad. All right, good, good. good. Ooh, thank you. It looks amazing. Dan Hansen said, no cool person has ever been named Arthur. <laughs> Dan Hansen. So is that Rich Hansen's brother? Dan Hansen? All right, I'm grading these answers. You guys did well. Just came up with a few ways to spell this. Correct answer is from the X-Men, Cyclops. Cyclops, Scott Summers with the sick ass visor. Cyclops, good job. All right, one more of the uh, comic book character questions. Name the comic book character uh, whose real name is Aurora Monroe. 
Which comic book character uses the alias has a real name? Aurora Monroe. Whoa. Yes, sure is. My boyfriend. The aardvark, though. He's the Danny DeVito. Yes, the aardvark. Why do we call him Dan? I love Arthur. Oh, that was two different conversations going on. I thought that Dan Hansen was the aardvark. 6'5", Danny DeVito. The aardvark. Your boyfriend. Uh, Nicole's boyfriend is Dan Hansen. That's Rich Hansen's brother. Oh. I'm creating a family tree live online during Vega Tricks Trivia. 6'5", Danny DeVito? There's another sentence I didn't know I needed to hear. You guys are wild. 6'5", Danny DeVito. No, Arthur the... Uh, <laughs> I sprayed lemon juice everywhere. That's okay. Uh, a lot of you got this, but probably the toughest one of this round. The correct answer is Storm. So two X-Men in a row, Storm, the correct answer here. So definitely a tough round if you're not a comic book fan, but, you know, we're through it. That's it for the comic book questions. Let's take a look at the standings and see where we're at. Mr. Beans still up in first, but only nine points ahead of Team Cream. M-Dubs 85 is right there in third. Um, everybody else, Buckingham Cheddar Cheese. I didn't see that one before. Snorkeldink Cheddar Cheese. Two Cheddar Cheese, two related... Uh, <laughs> Benedict names in here. Blubberbutt Cracker Dong. Ooh, what about the Dudley Moore movie? What about the Russell Brand movie? Didn't he redo Arthur? Yes. Yeah, it's probably terrible. I never saw it. I like Russell Brand, though. Yeah, but something shouldn't be tampered with. Curse you, beans! <laughs> nice for it. Bobby, rock and roll. 66. Moving on up. All right, the next round is a picture round. Um, once again, this is an example of... Uh, we do these mini bonus rounds because if this happens to be your thing, you're going to love it. And if this is not your thing, you're not going to love it. But there's only five questions from this category. Um, and that's what these nights are for. Shout out again to Mike who got to choose these categories. Um, if you win the donation drawing raffle in the future, you can choose our categories. Tonight we do have a picture round. This picture round, we've done it before, but there are new pictures. I'm gonna ask you to name the famous professional wrestler. Name the famous WWE or WWF or WCW wrestler. All right, some of these I think will be easy even if you're not a fan of wrestling. Some of them you'll recognize anyway. Um, some of them might be tough, but they're each worth 200 points and you get 200 points. If you're wrong, you don't lose anything. So just give it a shot, take a guess. You're not gonna lose anything if you're wrong. Here we go. This one, probably the easiest one. What is the name of this professional wrestler? What is the name of this professional wrestler? I did not do well with superheroes. It's about to get way worse. You don't know, Becky, maybe not. Arthur Conan Doyle was pretty cool. <laughs> Art Vandalay. I heard he's kind of a jerk. Ah, strangers with court. This is your time. Wait, don't you? Are you the person who does the WWE podcast or professional wrestling podcast? Uh, Courtney? Ali the Jerk Store called. Oh, fantastic. Court, I had no idea. I remember um, Gina and Steph mentioning that a while back. I need to listen. Uh, Courtney does the podcast you told me oh, about. Yeah. yeah, and this is Name the Professional Wrestler Picture oh, Round. Crush yeah, yeah, she'll probably do pretty well. <laughs> However, everybody that answered here got it right. Don't let the percentages fool you. Um, you know that everybody got it right because there's no wrong answers listed on the screen. This is just a glitch with the system. Uh, everybody that answered got this right. This is The Rock. If you put The Rock or Rock or Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, The Rock Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, any of those got you points here. So good job. Everybody that answered got points 70 people here all right question 18 name the professional wrestler what is the name of this professional wrestler the sock uh sarah yeah get him you knew vince mcmahon from your boyfriend <laughs> Rich, did he do oh, Jesus, Rich. He's dark. <laughs> He's not here and not answering my face. Yeah, time. Becky, you're right. That's like a, a American Apparel deep. Yeah. Deep scoop. <laughs> this is, 
Remember those deep V's that your guys used to wear? Is, this, is American Apparel still a company? I haven't heard. I don't know, but I want to get that outfit. I'm going to rock that for one of these trivia nights. More importantly, did you know that in 1998? Nah. Correct answer here is The Undertaker. The Undertaker. If you put Undertaker or The Undertaker, anything close to that, you got points. So it's said slash. No. Um, here we go. Number 19. Name this professional wrestler. This guy Ooh, I like those panties. Thank you. I have the same ones. This guy attended uh, Downers Grove North. Downers Grove North alumni. Really? Yeah. Missy D, my 14-year-old Austin. Just wait, Missy. Just you wait. It's only going to get better for you then. Uh, I went as this guy for Halloween one year. I'll post that picture in the online community. So it looks like Amazon bought American Apparel because when you go to their website to buy something, it says buy at Amazon.com. So that's kind of cool. Wow. Yeah. Look at their hoodies, though. You guys spelled this a lot of different ways, so give me one second. I'll throw it up so you can see that I'm actually working here. So, Chris, to answer your question from yesterday that you never asked, but you kind of asked, uh, I got a new computer, so everything's working a little faster, which I'm appreciating, and I'm sure you guys can appreciate. It doesn't take me 45 minutes to grade every single question now, which is really nice. All right, the so correct answer here is Macho Man Randy Savage. Good job, everybody. Most of you got this. 67, we're going to call it social. It's not as high as the other ones, but um, I don't know. We're going to do it because we haven't drank in a while. Cheers, everybody. Um, okay, let's do this. Question number 20. This one's for Missy. Name this professional wrestler. If you're in the online community, I just posted a photo for you there. Now that you know Macho Man Randy Savage. Perfect. Nicole just said someone to start a thread, a Halloween costume thread, so we can just go off that. Yeah, I just posted the photo myself and my best friend of all time, Andrew Bergoni, the individual that founded the company that would become Bag of Tricks Entertainment with me. I'll post my feed. Yeah, we went as Macho Man and the Hulk Hulkster one year. You guys can check that out if you'd like. Post your favorite Halloween costumes on that thread. Uh, I'm grading these. I'll throw it up so you see. Not Jesse Ventura. Fred Savage, Randy's brother. <laughs> ah, the older older brother of Ben. Not John Cena. This is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin 316 says... You know what it says. All right. There's one more, everybody. Question 21 will be the final name the professional wrestler. Uh, cheers to you guys. 81% of you got that right. So that's a social. Ooh, this dog is staring at me. Question 21, final professional wrestler name this professional wrestler. Everybody's in. 
Now, I'm going to look for a pretty specific answer here because many of you got it. Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant. If you have not, I've said it before, but if you have not watched the documentary on HBO, if you have access to HBO or HBO Max, whatever, uh, watch the documentary. It's really good. That's it for the professional wrestlers. So let's take a look. Not much changing at the top, guys, but there is plenty of time and there are plenty of points still available. So keep your head up and keep your fingers typing quickly as we move into the final round of questions. The final 10 questions of the evening will be worth 300 points each, and it is still a very close game. So this is anybody's game to win. We have a $25 gift card to Elmhurst Brewing Company on the line. I'm gonna let this rotate through so you can see where you all are at. We are through. All right. So like I mentioned, there is no um, there's no connection here. There's no secret connection. It's not a picture round. It's not a bonus round. The next 10 questions are just 10 random questions. Like the very first round we did, the difference is they're no longer multiple choice. So you have to type the answer in all on your own. So a little bit tougher. Um, some of these still may be very simple, though. You may know these just fine. But you do have to type the answer in all on your own and hit submit before that timer gets down to zero ideally before it hits five just to help yourself out but each one of these are worth 300 points and each one of these still come from the seven categories that mike gave to me so here we go question 22 in the hit 90s tv show buffy the vampire slayer what was buffy's last name what was buffy's last name royal rumble Strangers with Court. This round was the best I've ever done at trivia. Yes. 13, 14 year old Chris loved this mini round. Yeah, Chris, I chose uh, pretty much all Attitude Era wrestlers. Well, Andre was earlier. Macho Man was earlier, but nothing beyond like the year 2000. I almost did like pure Rocky Mayavia, The Rock. I thought the other guy was showing a lot of cleavage, but Andre has brought it to a new level. <laughs> Six run on these. Yes, Courtney, we've done. Yeah, we've done WWE trivia. Um, I'll probably do it again. She'll be the queen. Yeah. Doink the clown. Doink and his sidekick Dink. I met them at Diversitech in Mantino at a WWA wrestling event, probably in like the year 1998. Doink and Dink. I have a picture with Doink somewhere. And King Kong Bundy. King Kong Bundy was there, I believe. You're speaking a different language, buddy. That's okay. Somebody said somebody said her last name with no spaces, the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> like, remember the uh, the correct answer is Summers before I go on a tangent. Do you remember the commercial from a few years ago where it was like, uh, would you like to accept a collect call from yes. Bob? Had a baby, it's a boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. All right, good job, those of you who got it. Summers, if you spelled it Summers with an O, I still gave it to you here. All right, question 23. Every episode of Seinfeld contains an image or a reference to what superhero? The real superhero. Every uh, episode of Seinfeld contains an image or a reference to what superhero? Chris, nice guess. The Vampire Slayer. Trying to imagine the Undertaker and the Princess Bride? Did that almost happen? Oh, no, you're just referring to the different levels of cleavage. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Golden Age of Wrestling, Dudley Boys versus Hardy Boys, yes. Um, if you guys haven't caught any of the episodes, um, I think it's Vice puts out a series, Dark Side of the Ring, on YouTube. It's free, um, and it's it's pretty good. There's a Chris Benoit, Chris Benoit, if you will, um, a two-part episode that was really good surrounding that. Uh, there's a bunch of great episodes. Dark Side of the Ring. If you're at all interested in wrestling, I would check it out. Owen Hart. One. Yeah, I, I stopped that one. Um, I'll finish it eventually. I was watching that live. I'm sure you two, you were too, Court. Um, I was watching that event live. Correct answer here. 69% of you knew it was Superman. So cheers, everybody. Great job. Superman, the correct answer. Seinfeld in that commercial with Superman. 
stop him from crossing the street. Like Superman would have gotten hurt. Number 24. Uh, looking for the name of a movie. What is the title of the 2004 zombie comedy starring Simon Pegg and Nick Frost? Sure, all you would like a what's happening? Why do I want to break? I do want to break, but for what? I have a petition to have you tally the points. Oh, petition to have you tally the points. Yeah, Chris, here, let me do that really quick. Okay, they petition. I, you actually had 100 points more than you should have, so I deducted 100 points. <laughs> I did the mental math. I figured it out really quick. It's, not, it's on Taco, by the way. Good. So you couldn't see me doing the math, but I did. <laughs> oh, I did. I have, I have a notebook. Snarky. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, he's a... Uh, that didn't go the way we he's planned. He's sassy tonight. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the points. <laughs> I'm really excited to see him in Halloween costume. Yeah, me too. Uh, any sexy Albert Einsteins yet? Not yet. No, okay. Uh, the correct answer here is Shaun of the Dead. 90%. Almost all of you knew this. Um, it doesn't matter how you spelled Shaun, um, whether it's the correct way, S-H-A-U-N, which is also my middle name. There's some trivia for you. Um, or with a W, or the Irish Sean, S-E-A-N. All of those got you points. Um, the only thing that didn't get points here is Zombieland or Spider Plant Man. So good job. We'll do question 25, and then we'll look at the standings. I'll tally them up. I'll recount for Chris. What city, uh, this is my favorite gift tonight, what city was the setting for the 90s sitcom Family Matters? What city was the setting for the 90s sitcom Family Matters? Yeah, let's just go to the Winchester, have an ice cold pint, and wait for this all to blow over. Sounds lovely. Show us your work, Brad. That's, uh, I always enjoyed math, but I did like doing mental math. And I eventually bowed to teachers who would make you show work. I just never was a conformist in that way. Like, shit, if I can do it without showing work, why should I show work? Sorry, I'm on a tangent here right now. Yeah. I'm going to bring it back. I wish I could commiserate with you, but I can't. You can know I can't do math. Yeah, that's okay. But I understand what you're saying. Like, yeah. You have the answer. It's not like you cheated to find it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is frustrating. Anyway, guys, I'm, I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm coming back to center here. Uh, the correct answer, Carl Winslow was a Chicago police officer. He, he was in Chicago. Uh, this was a spinoff of Perfect Strangers. Um, we had Urkel or eventually Stefan. Was it Stefan Urkel um, mm -hmm. with his cool juice or cool goo, whatever it was. He had a machine that made him really cool. All right, that's 25, so let's take a look at the standings. This is the last time we'll see him uh, before the end. Nancy Marie and Big Chris Sikora in second and third, but Team Cream still right out in front. Less than a question in front, though. 300 points apiece, so uh, anybody's game still. I see Cheesy Bread out there. Thanks a lot. Now I want Cheesy Bread. Uh, Summer and I have been doing fractions and show him for it because it's been exhausting. Yeah. Yeah, Brad, see, I'm with you. I just saw a fraction joke today. I bet I wouldn't get it. No, I think you would. Probably wouldn't get at least half of it. <laughs> All right, we'll go through one more time because this is the final time you'll see it. Steph and I were at the bookstore today and um, there was, they had a bunch of Star Wars books for kids to teach them stuff. So there was Star Wars third grade math and I was afraid I wouldn't understand. <laughs> it was really cute though. That's awesome. They had a bunch of them. If Han Solo, could run the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs. How many parsecs would it be from here to here? All right, almost through for the second time. Ricky Bobby still directly in 66. Consistent. Miss LaRocca and Bert. A poo poo and a pee pee. Welcome back. Jay Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Welcome. All right, here we go. Six questions left, each of them worth 300 points. This, I'm just looking for a first name. We know their last name's Bundy. What was the name of Al and Peggy Bundy's son on the Fox sitcom Married with Children? What was the name of the son? Don't be distracted by Christina Applegate. We're looking at the son here. What was the name of the son on Married with Children? 
Thank you, Lisa, for the donation. Thank you, Maggie, for the donation. Thank you, Alyssa, for the donation. We appreciate it so much, you guys. Sincerely. One of the pages was called Cantina Containers. It was so cute. It was like, if you got this drink... Oh, I love improper fractions, by the way, Christine. Oh, I, don't, I don't remember the page, but it was adorable. Yeah, I think, I'm assuming the other Andersons are open, too. So there's Downers Grove, Naperville, LaGrange. Those are the three I know. Um, but it's nice to support the local bookshop. Absolutely. Correct answer here is Bud. Bud Bundy. Uh, and then you had the dog, Buck Bundy. Bud and Buck Bundy. All right, 27. One more <laughs> question. I think I've asked this one in the past, so we'll see if you remember. When Michael Jordan returned to the Bulls in 1995, he didn't come back with his number 23. Before he went back to 23, when he returned to the Bulls, what jersey number did he wear before he did change back to 23? What jersey number? You can only answer with numbers here. What number was on Michael Jordan's jersey before he returned to 23? Yes, Space Jam's on um, Netflix. Maggie, if you haven't seen it, if Addison's never seen it, it's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. We watched it like three, two, three weeks ago. That was like a month and a half ago. Oh, God, it was like two months ago. <laughs> We've watched it so many times. Good, good, Time good, good. Time is good. not linear these days. Ooh, I'm going to start a post later. Drive-in Space Jam showing in Lamont in July. Really? Oh, fantastic. Oh, cute. Starring, Starring Bill Murray. We watched it. Oh my God, Maggie! The oh. first time Addison, if Michael Jordan was named after her shoes, oh, that's adorable. Ooh, Nicole Selig, your birthday party will be watching Space Jam. I'll be there. Where in the? Okay, you might know this one from a Jay Z song. Tyler King says. Correct answer here. Nothing for me to grade. Forty-five. Forty-five. The correct answer. A couple of you said forty-four, fifty-four, forty-five. The correct answer. Number 28, what was the name of Doug Funny's favorite band on the show Doug? Deep cut here. What was the name of Doug Funny's favorite rock band on the show Doug? I don't I only remember the song that him and Skeeter sang. What about Philly Tokyo? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not You're not Jordan. Ooh, a rowdy crowd. How did this get made? That's a podcast I didn't get into. I'd give it another try. More I need allowance. more allowance. Yeah, yeah. Allowance. yes, yes. Uh, so the correct answer here is the beats. An obvious riff on the Beatles. The beats. The correct answer. 51% of you got this. Good job. Question 29. Rod Argent, Colin Blundstone, Paul Atkinson, and Hugh Grundy are members of which band formed in the late 1950s in Hertfordshire, England? Yes, this might be the toughest question of the day, but let's see who can figure it out. Yes, Chris, I did reference banging on a trash can, strumming on a street line. Yes. If you use your context clues and your critical thinking, even if you're not sure of the answer, you might be able to come up with this one. Did you see Chelsea George's comment? No. Pretty cool. On what? Oh, here. The creator of Doug is from Richmond, Virginia and based the show on RVA stuff. Our home oh, nice! Cool. I did not know that, Chelsea. Thanks for letting us know. All right, everybody's in. The Brad Haas experiments? No. Oh, sorry. You guys can't see these. Um, not One Direction. No, not The Kinks. Not The Beats. Good reference clue. Uh, the correct answer is The Zombies. Uh, the Zombies. Uh, the Zombies, the correct answer. Uh, we had a couple zombie songs played on our uh, British Invasion music bingo this week by both Bobby K and Henry JBC. 
That was um, a really tricky zombie question. Thank like, you very much. I even clued that I was going to ask this when I said uh, Mike just asked for zombie questions. He didn't say zombie movies or zombie something. He just said zombies. So here's your zombie questions. <laughs> Number 30. What was the name of the giant talking head? You can see him here that told stories to teams like the Purple Parrots and the Blue Barracudas on Legends of the Hidden Temple. What was the name of the giant talking head? Giant talking head? <laughs> or, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just a joke. I know, I liked it. It was, yeah. yeah. Maggie, I know. I, I went back and forth on if I wanted to do this one because of the spelling. Well, it'll give you time to go to the bathroom or make a drink or yeah. take out your dog. Yeah, well, I made it question 30 so that I could just, you know. Bruce. Yeah. Already? Well, we have one more question after this, and then we still have uh, Gilmore, Gilmore Girls Girl. trivia tonight, my friends. Who's coming back for Gilmore Girls? Yeah, who's coming back for Gilmore Girls? Whether you know it or not, come hang out. I'm going to have a snack in between. Me too. <laughs> Yay! Uh, the correct answer Woo! is Olmec. Olmec, if your answer was A or... Oh, I see one in there. Two in there that I'm going to give this to. This oh, one. Yeah, a little cutie pie. There, that was close. That was just an I. Uh, Olmec, the correct answer here. Good job. All right, question number 31. This is the final question. What is the name of the city that the events of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV show take place in? What is the name of the city that you would see Buffy the Vampire Slayer taking place in? Damn it, I could not get Zordon out of my head. Yes, another giant talking head, Nicole. I apologize. We'll be back. Yes, I'll be here. Amy, yes. Jennifer, yes. Lindsay, yes. Sarah, Yay! yes. Steph, yes. This is so exciting. When I said this makes my day, I was not exaggerating. Yeah. Yes, Power Rangers. Simple person. I want to do just a 90s TV trivia night soon. Okay. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. Damn, good questions, Begatrix. Thanks, Florent. I appreciate that. Florent? Yes. Yeah, that'd be fun. Ooh, a couple of you close. A couple of you just had a couple of misspellings. Correct answer here is Sunnydale, not Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> good guess. Not Phoenix, Riverside, Atlanta, Greendale, Beverly Greendale, Hills. Garlic Town. I can't imagine too Ooh. many vampires would live in Garlic Town. Uh, but good guess. Santa Clara. That's uh, Lost Boys, I believe. Uh, fictional. Santa Barbara. Yeah, psych. psych. All right. That's it for the questions tonight. All we have left to do is look at the final standings. If you are in first place, please send a message to the Bag of Tricks Entertainment Facebook page and let us know that you won first place. We'll uh, get you some information, get you set up with that $25 gift card to Elmhurst Brewing Company. Again, thank you so much to every single person that sent a donation. I don't know if I mentioned Lisa. Uh, I saw a donation come in. Thank you so much. Um, tonight's the last night. If you do donate before the end of tonight, you're in for next week's donation drawing winner and you could uh, choose the categories for a general knowledge trivia next week. So whether you do that or not, guys, come back and join us. Gilmore Girls at 9 o'clock tonight. Even if you don't like the show, if you have nothing going on, hang out. Make yourself a drink and chat in the comments with Gina and myself uh, while we ask questions about Gilmore Girls. So yeah. that's it for this, but let's look at the final standings. In first place, Mr. Beans by exactly nine points over Team Cream. Uh, who wasn't that far ahead of M-Dubs 85. It was back and forth all night there, but Mr. Beans ended in first. Please send us a message if you are Mr. Beans to the Bag of Tricks Entertainment Facebook page. Let us know that you won, uh, and we'll get you set up with that. For everybody else, thank you so much for being here. Please, if you're, if you're not joining us for Gilmore Girls Trivia tonight, have a great night. Um, if you are, we'll see you soon. Either way, join the Bag of Tricks online community. Have some fun with us there. It's free to join. It's on Facebook. We just chat and share random ass pictures. And uh, I make announcements about private events that we may be hosting that won't be public that you guys can join via Zoom for free. So that's it. Bye, guys. See you at night and wash your hands.